Hey guys, this is Shadsaw Slavin here, and we're taking on Angel Island Zone now. Yes, this zone was named after the first zone in Sonic 3. And, how can I put it straight? This is where I start to dislike the game. I mean, after an amazing level like Ice Mountain, this is a huge step backwards. The first thing is the enemies can be pretty cheap. Like, you know, those wasps which are really good at aiming, they can, like, fire off-screen and, like, hit you without being on the screen. So you're like, just go around, then a bullet will just fly into you. It's just, you know, comes out of nowhere and it's just cheap. Okay. And the level design. Oh, dear God. Oh, well, let me put it this way. This zone, this first act isn't so bad. I mean, it does have quite a few annoying blind jumps, like that one. But it's not the worst level out there. But, yeah, you do have to take the annoying leap of faith. A few loops incorporated. But, yeah, see how that enemy is, like, firing at me off the screen? It nearly hit me. Oh, God. Oh, no! How on earth was I able to dodge that? I mean, that was annoying. That was Oil Ocean from Sonic 2 Standard. Mm, trying to get up here is a bitch. Getting on the wheel now. Uh, rolling rock. The thing about these blind jumps is I was okay with them in Sonic Advance 2 because you were like given more attacks and the controls were less stiff so you know you had more time to react to them, more of a chance to save yourself but in this game you don't get that. Oh and this bit, these stairs, if you go up them too fast that enemy will hit you so it's like the level design and the enemy just team up with each other there to give you a cheap hit. These wheels can be a bit annoying. I don't need that shield. Okay. Ah, oh, extra life. Now, what's one thing you may have noticed by now that hasn't happened yet? I haven't finished the level. Yeah, because while the last few levels were all really short, this game, this level then throws a curveball at you and just makes it, like, more than twice as long. I mean, I know games' levels are supposed to gradually increase in length as the game progresses, but this just doesn't. It just hits you by surprise. We're just no good incline. <sighs> I actually did quite well in this level. Didn't lose all those 151 rings. Which I'm amazed at. But that too. <sighs> this is where the game gets really annoying. Okay, there's a bottomless pit down there, so you've got to carefully jump over those clouds. Okay, now how's this for a trap? You come to, like, a moving platform, and if you're not quick enough to get across, you will get crushed. That's one way to catch you out. <sighs> Through here is a bit tedious. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not the kind of person who, like, needs speed every, like, five seconds in my Sonic game, but, you know, here it would have been nice to have a bit more, because it just doesn't feel like I get enough of it. And the platforming that is incorporated in this game does feel a bit tacky. So, I don't know, it just can't seem to get the balance down. Alright, now, we're coming up to another part which I truly despise. For one reason. You go down this sandslide, 
just totally unexpected. And then, wham! You hit a spring and shit, I missed. See, that's the thing. If I knew that spring was gonna like take me into a platform, which I didn't first time, you're only gonna have like one second to react before you fall down a pit. Jeez, man. In Sonic Advance 2, I'd have just been able to save myself and give me more air time, but here you've got to know it's coming. See what I mean about these blind jumps? Ah, oh, stupid spikes. It may seem like I'm complaining too much, but I'm just not having fun, you know. I mean, this is a Killjoy level. Okay. One good thing I'll say about this level is it gives you loads of invincibility TVs. <sighs> yeah, it's like the developers knew this stage was going to be hell. Alright, there we go. Oh, come on! Okay, let's put this into perspective. You've got a platform that's thin anyway, and you have to jump to it on a slope platform. Yes, and because of the angle you jump at, you will most likely overshoot your jump. It's really easy to overshoot your jump, and... Yeah, and you've only got like a second to react to it. That is so fucking cheap. Oh yeah, there was a checkpoint up there. Good thing is, you don't have to go that way. You can just go up here. And providing you make a good spring jump, you should land on that platform. And get... Ah, oh, Wasted quite a bit of my invincibility there. Not really got much to say, but truth be told, I'm actually quite bored. Because, you know, nothing really feels like it's happening. And like I said before, I don't need action every five seconds, but... I'm just, you know, really perplexed at how... First few stages, all really short, fairly easy, then this one just, you know... Changes things dramatically, it's like there's no in-between. We're nearly done with the stage anyways. Just the boss left. Now you're probably thinking what Eggman's going to pull this time. Well believe it or not, you don't fight Eggman. We come up to... Wait. <gasps> Knuckles? Is that you? No. It's some kind of nagger Knuckles. And about this boss... Oh boy. He just makes up his own hitboxes. Like, sometimes you'll be able to hear him, but other times you won't. I never got it down. Where is you're supposed to attack him? I mean, it's on the head. But when you hit him four times, he turns into Metal Knuckles. And he basically just gains a new attack where he fires missiles at you. And they're very cheap. Ah, <sighs> jeez, this is just annoying. But I'll be him. Yeah, I got lucky that time. But I'm just relieved that level's over. Because I did not enjoy that. Okay. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for when we take on the next level in the Psycho Bounce playthrough.